Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Gravel and I am a student at Massasoit Community College taking Professor David LaFontaine's Honors GLBT Themes in Literature class. The title of my honors project is as follows. Of sensuality, serenity, and spring I sing. Mary Oliver and Walt Whitman on nature, spirituality, and queer sensibility. The research I am presenting today centers two poets whose contributions to the LGBTQ canon and to the literary arts in general continue to be resonant. The verses of queer eco-poets Mary Oliver and Walt Putman will be placed in conversation for what I believe will be the first time, highlighting their unique brand of LGBTQ activism, the kinship and shared themes they exhibit through their art form, and why it is so vitally important to recognize and celebrate their queerness. To introduce Walt Whitman, I wanted to briefly share a quote which has come to define Whitman in a multitude of ways. Uh, this quote comes from Whitman's seminal poem, Song of Myself, which is referenced numerous times in this research. Do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. To give a bit of background on Walt Whitman, uh, the poet grew up in New York and actually exited the formal education system at 11 years old to join the printing trade. Um, this is where he fell in love with literature and actually worked as a teacher and as a journalist for many years thereafter. 1855 was certainly his watershed year, self-publishing Leaves of Grass and being ushered into the limelight. Leaves of Grass containing pioneering themes of homoeroticism, worship of the naked male body, even feminism, and certainly a unique spirituality. Whitman spent much of his life with his lover, Peter Doyle, whom history remembers as a good friend to Whitman, but was certainly his lover, and whom Whitman indirectly writes much poetry about and to. To introduce Mary Oliver, I'd like to quote one of her most well-known poems, The Summer Day. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? This quote reminds us all of the ephemerality of life, how deeply important it is to live a life being true to ourselves, which both Whitman and Oliver certainly did. Mary Oliver grew up in suburban Ohio and unfortunately faced a significantly traumatic childhood, facing sexual abuse from her father and a generally tumultuous household, which she actually wouldn't speak about until she was elderly. She expands extensively on how much of a salvation nature served for her in her youth and throughout her life, and speaks about how the poetry of Walt Whitman also served as a salvation in her younger years. Oliver spent the better part of 40 years of her life living in Provincetown, Massachusetts with her partner Molly Malone Cook. Cook actually became Oliver's literary agent and saw her through her Pulitzer Prize win amongst her plethora of other accomplishments. Cook's death in 2005 inspired Mary Oliver to write Thirst and Our World, Thirst being a collection of poems deeply inspired by the grief Oliver was feeling after Cook's death, and Our World, a beautiful collection of photographs from Cook and written reflections from Mary Oliver. The primary impetus behind putting these two authors in conversation was actually Mary Oliver's 2016 essay entitled My Friend Walt Whitman, her dedication of sorts to the poet she considered one of her closest friends as a child, a wise uncle through whom she learned so many valuable lessons about poetry and life in spite of their century separation. Conversation commences. There are essentially endless subtopics within nature that could be discussed in the poetry of both Oliver and Whitman as eco-poets and all. For the purposes of this research, though, the focus remains on these two subtopics. Nature as lover and physical and spiritual transcendence through nature and song. To share a few lines from each of these poems and literally place them in conversation for you all, Mary Oliver's The Gardens establishes a scene deep in the woods within which she finds another human, an extension of this woodland scene, a lover. The skin you wear so neatly in which you settle so brightly on the summer grass, how shall I know it? Your two human legs which tremble and open into the dark country I keep dreaming of, 
How shall I touch you unless it is everywhere? I ask over and over for your whereabouts, trekking wherever you take me, the boughs of your body leading deeper into the trees, over the white fields, the rivers of bone, the shouting, the answering, the rousing, great run toward the interior, the unseen, the unknowable center. And as a sort of responsorial hymn, a similar passage can be found in Whitman's Song of Myself, section 21. I am he that walks with the tender and growing night. I call to the earth and see, half held by the night. Press close, bare-bosomed night. Press close, magnetic, nourishing night. Still nodding night, mad, naked summer night. Smile, O oh, voluptuous, cool-breathed earth. Smile, for your lover comes. Prodigal, you have given me love, and therefore I give you love. O oh, unspeakable passion of love thruster holding me tight and that I hold tight. We hurt each other as the bridegroom and the bride hurt each other. You see, I resign myself to you also. Cushion me soft, rock me in billowy drowse, dash me with amorous wet. I can repay you. In terms of physical and spiritual transcendence, the poems discussed both paint a picture of the poets reclining in the woods, in the lush grass in Whitman's case. They are entirely consumed by a sense of union with the earth, the nature around them, which for both Whitman and Oliver served as a place of refuge from their social and political environments. Oliver gently observes that I slept as never before, stone on the riverbed, nothing between me and the white fire of the stars, but my thoughts, and they floated light as moths among the branches of the perfect trees, all night I heard the small kingdoms breathing around me, the insects and the birds who do their work in the darkness. By morning I had vanished at least a dozen times into something better. And Whitman, with a similar adoration and transcendent sense, responds, Swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth, and I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own, and I know that the spirit of God is the brother of my own, and that a calcine of the creation is love, and limitless leaves stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them. Queer sensibility is something inextricable from any and every line of poetry Oliver and Whitman ever wrote. There are three specific examples of this sensibility I choose to highlight in this research. The specific dedications Oliver and Whitman wrote to their lovers in their poetry, the worship of the human body and form, and the value of practicing intentional wandering as queer poets. I want to close by reciting poems each author wrote inspired by or to their lovers. From Walt Whitman's Live Oak with Moss. And when I thought how my friend, my lover, was coming, then I was happy. Oh, then each breath tasted sweeter, and all that day my food nourished me more. And the beautiful day passed well, and the next came with equal joy, and with the next at evening came my friend. And that night, while all was still, I heard the waters roll slowly, continually up the shores. I heard the hissing rustle of the liquid sands, which directed to me, whispering to congratulate me, for the friend I love lay sleeping by my side, in the stillness his face was inclined towards me, while the moon's clear beams shone, and his arms lay lightly over my breast, and that night I was happy. And for Mary Oliver, those days. When I think of her, I think of the long summer days she lay in the sun, how she loved the sun, how we spread our blanket and friends came and the dogs played, and then I would get restless and get up and go off to the woods and the fields and the afternoon would soften gradually, and finally I would come home through the long shadows and into the house where she would be, my glorious welcoming tan, and hungry and ready to tell the hurtless gossips of the day, and how I listened leisurely while I put around the room flowers and jars of water, daisies, butter, and eggs, and everlasting until, like our lives, they trembled and shimmered everywhere. Thank you.